What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're going to be talking about two things in this video. We'll be talking about Final Destination 6, going over an updated plot description that is now available courtesy of Production Weekly. And we'll be talking about Scream 7 and speculating, pulling at straws, grasping at straws if you want to call it that. Nothing official. Just something a bit interesting that seems to be happening that could tie into Scream 7 if you choose to believe what I am speculating on. So... Just to start off, I want to shout out to you, Kay, if you're listening to this, because all of this is coming from you. But starting off with Final Destination 6, Final Destination 6, as I put out a video on Sunday, is going under the working title of Final Destination 6 Bloodlines. And at first, going off of what I was saying was coming from the Hollywood North buzz, it seemed as though the first responder concept was still at play for the upcoming Final Destination 6 movie. We know that it's supposed to actually start shooting in Vancouver later this year during the month of July through September. That is still the case. But now I'm not too certain if that first responder concept is actually going to be fleshed out in this upcoming entry which does has me a little have me a little bit upset however there's a chance that this could just be a specific person who is still a first responder dealing with the latest string of events associated with uh death and its design so the updated synopsis according to production weekly for final destination six goes as follows a young woman named stephanie has a recurring dream about dying in a fire that occurred in the 1960s. She realizes that is not just a dream, but a premonition of the fate that awaits her family. Her grandmother had escaped the same fate years ago. Now, death is coming after Stephanie's entire family, and she must find a way to stop it before it's too late. Now, the young woman, she's named Stephanie. She's having a recurring dream about dying in a fire that occurred in the 60s, but she comes to realize it's a premonition. We don't know who Stephanie is. She could actually end up still being a first responder. I'm holding out hope that this is still somehow connected to first responders. Uh, she could be an EMT, let's say, for instance. And then her grandmother, I thought that was, this is an interesting tidbit. It says that her grandmother had escaped the same fate years ago. So did this grandmother actually manage to do what Alex couldn't do, which was cheat death and get out of its design, get out of its path? And if so, is this film set in the same universe as these other movies? Or is it just a complete entire rehaul that, of course, is still a Final Destination movie one way or another? But the grandmother stuff, I think, is going to be something that's fun to explore because it says her grandmother had escaped the same fate years ago. Now death is coming after Stephanie's entire family and she must find a way to stop it before it's too late. So this would be the first time, I think, where you have death coming after an entire family. Um, and it's connected to an older relative getting away from death years ago. That that is different. I I don't think we've had that before in the Final Destination series. I, I would if this is the different thing that they're talking about. That is very different. The concept of the fire doesn't sound all that exciting compared to some of what we've seen in the past. But again, there could be some aspects to Stephanie that still make this a compelling story. I'm still again holding out hope that Stephanie is a first responder, but time will tell if Stephanie is a first responder or if that concept was abandoned completely. You guys can let me know what you think about this information regarding Final Destination 6 down in the comment section below. We're going to jump into Scream 7. Scream 7, again, has not been officially greenlit by Paramount, Spyglass. Nobody involved with Radio Silence or anybody involved with the official cast has actually said that, yeah, it's happening. But we more or less, due to the commercial and critical success, have a, have a good hunch that Ghostface will be returning sooner rather than later. And, of course, recently at, at the uh, CinemaCon panel, Paramount made it known that they listen to their consumers. And I guess if your consumers showed up for a screen movie, you're going to continue to listen to them and give them another screen movie because they're going to show up for that one as well, which is, the again, the other sign that Scream 7 is coming sooner rather than later. It just hasn't been officially greenlit. Now, recently, the last biggest thing we speculated on here was the fact that Christopher Landon could be involved in Scream 7 because Christopher Landon, who, again, is responsible for Freaky and Happy Death Day, he recently started following the core four of actors, Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, Jasmine Brown, Mason Gooding, along with Hedda Matarazzo, who we know plays Martha Meeks in the Scream franchise. Um, hasn't followed Courtney Cox, so that's the only thing that uh, kind of takes away from that being a possibility. But the other interesting thing that has now happened is Mike Flanagan, and again, shout out to UK, 
has started following Christopher Landon on Instagram and Christopher Landon has started following him back or at least their interactions might have been might have been increased recently. So the reason I found that to be interesting is because while he hasn't followed the core four actors the way Christopher Landon has, could Mike Flanagan be involved with an upcoming screen production? And the reason I think that this is something worth speculating on is because if you click on the, the link in Mike Flanagan's Instagram bio, it comes up with a bio to his website, MikeFlanaganFilm.com, that says that under their, in, re, in respect to him and producer Trevor Macy, under their intrepid banner, Flanagan and Macy entered into an exclusive overall deal with Netflix in 2019 for their television projects and have produced feature films for Warner Brothers, Universal Pictures, and Paramount, among others. Now, it's that among Paramount that got me going. Now, you guys can help me because I haven't been able to find anything. What Paramount movie has Mike Flanagan worked on? I can't find anything. That's why I'm like, is this actually related to a new upcoming Paramount project? Could it potentially be Scream 7? I mean, you just started following Chris Christopher Landon, who also just recently started following The Core 4 and Heather Matarazzo. And then your bio has stuff related to you working and producing feature films for Paramount, but I can't find anything from Paramount that you've worked on recently in the past. That's why I'm thinking it's a future project. Now, I think that the pairing of Mike Flanagan and Christopher Landon would be something something that could balance itself out. People were already concerned about Christopher Landon leaning too heavy on comedy. I think that if Christopher Landon was com was writing the script and Flanagan was bringing it to life, he would lean more on the horror side of things. And he would also, of course, give you something along the lines of what you have seen if you love Haunting of Hill House, Bly Manor, all those Mike Flanagan projects. But this would be a lot different because it would be Mike Flanagan's, uh, I think this would be his first slasher film. So it would be nice to see him kind of, again, balance that comedy and that horror, which I would say he kind of already does have a good habit of doing, but he leans more on horror. So I just think it would be a more a thought provoking film if Mike Flanagan was in the uh, or at the helm behind a screen project. The other thing that was interesting, nothing too crazy, just something small. Back in 2022, he actually responded to a fan on Twitter when asked why he doesn't do sequels. Mike Flanagan said, I did the sequel to The Shining and had a blast doing that. And I did the prequel to Ouija and loved that, too. For the record, if anyone brought Scream 5 to me, I would have been very interested. So that's, again, another fun thing to see. He's already made comments about how he would have done Scream 5. Is he about to do Scream 7? Time will tell. Let me know what y'all think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. I'm going to movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.